Hello, I'm Claire McLeod. I'm a Grand Challenge Lead at the Medicines Manufacturing Innovation Centre at CPI. And today I'm talking about oligonucleotides in brief. So before we dive into this big concept, let's talk about how to pronounce it. So we're going to go with oligonucleotides. So you'll see why with that many syllables, people normally shorten this to oligos. For the rest of this video, I'll be using the, the shorter term oligos, just for simplicity. So oligonucleotides comes from the Greek oligo, which means short, and nucleotides refer to the building blocks of either RNA or DNA. So what this is, it's a short strand of RNA, but by short, we mean 20 different um, nucleotides, so it's still a really big molecule. An oligo is a, a strand of RNA, and what will happen is in the body, it will then find a strand of messenger RNA, and it will interact with that in some way to either stop or increase protein expression. So what an oligo will do in the body is it can target a specific part of messenger RNA, and that messenger RNA is what sends the signal to make protein. So the oligo, by interacting with the messenger RNA, will then change the amount of protein that's expressed. So either too much or too little of these proteins can be often what causes uh, an illness or a disease. So when we make oligos, we can choose the, the sequence of the nucleotide bases there, and we can choose how we functionalize them. And that means that they can go to the exact piece of messenger RNA and target a protein that's causing that's causing disease. So that means that we can widen the number of diseases that we can treat by bringing on new oligotherapies. So there is an existing process to make oligos. The problem is that we can only make small batches at any one time. So that means if we've got any drugs that are for large patient populations, we might be doing a batch a week. And if that's the case, then that means we need to bring four solvent tankers into the facility um, each week because the solvent usage is just so high. That's one of the reasons why at CPI we're developing Grand Challenge 3, which is looking at a more sustainable method for manufacturing oligos. And in this case, we're moving to what's called liquid phase synthesis using the NanoStar process. This means that we can scale up the process um, and we can um, make less batches per year, but still make that large volume we need to. We'll be able to use less solvent and we'll be able to open up the manufacturing capacity, which is really constrained, so that more small and large pharma companies can access that. That was oligonucleotides in brief. Thanks for watching and let us know what big concepts in innovation you'd like explained here.